Hey folks, how's it going? It's midday, which means the moment I refresh this page, we should be getting the flash fest with the new units. Okay, Galleon goes to wind. They're going very, very risque with these skins. I guess wind was also not that expected as an element, but we'll see. Kind of surprising. Water near. Again, we had the voice actress in the recording booth a while ago. Ah, she looks so damn cute. And of course, Aglovel goes to fire. Strangely, no Harvin this year. Still, let's go check their kits out. And then do the free pull. Sadly, I don't have a full spark yet. I've got like 160, 170 pulls. So maybe might YOLO a little bit, but I'm definitely not going to spark here. So, <laughs> Galleon even comes with the floaty, that's cute. Wind unknown special stuff unit. Unworldly wind damage to a foe, one turn cut to Galleon skill cooldown, foundation of prosperity effect, while in effect boost to triple attack rate, amplify normal attack damage and bonus wind damage, just for herself. But still, TA and A amp actually not bad. Adoring kiss, the gods love effect to the wind MC, this one actually works on full auto, no need to target it. Bonus wind damage one time, sharp boost to attack for one hit. Oh, cool, assassin! Triple attack, normal attack damage amplified, echo one time, assassin one turn. We had Korwa for Narmea, now we're getting a nice plus one too. We hit wind damage to all foes, hit to defense and supplements damage taken for three turns with a seven turns cooldown. Lastly, Mother's Earth Favor, sharp boost to Windalize defense, mitigate damage taken, dispel cancel, boost to spec for MC when MC has the God's Love effect. 5 turn defense up, 5 turns damage taken lowered, actually not bad. Dispel cancel too, this is going to help a lot in a win guild war. Foundation of Prosperity effect at battle start, no charge bar gain upon normal attacks, I guess that was to be expected. At the end of turn, if she didn't attack, Eastern see a standby. When Foundation of Prosperity isn't in effect, cannot normal attack. So sadly, she needs to do a charge attack before she can start normal attacking, which puts a little bit of a wrench in her overall kit. But she also needs to not attack to get the instant CA. Yeah, looks like she's not going to be all that great for a quick burst, but for 2, 3 plus turn setups, actually not bad. Lastly, at the end of the turn, if a wind ally didn't attack, wind damage to a foe, and dispel increases the number of hits based on the number of wind allies that didn't attack. So yet another character that's going to be pretty damn good for V2 fights. She keeps the V2 viability. Three dispels, this is going to sum to Estariolas. Only problem is that she's going to need to do charge attacks. Otherwise, all she does is dispels. And I don't know if you want to run Siegfried with your charge attacks on because the insane amount of damage reduction he has doesn't really let the unworldly wind damage on the charge attack shine. I don't know about this one. Uh, the lock on the normal attack might kill her a little bit, but outside of this, Assassin for MC is a really great buff, especially in conjunction with the Shield Sworn class now. And worldly charge attack is also really, really good, and she gets this automatically when she doesn't normal attack. So she looks a bit more like a an overall balanced character compared to someone who only focuses on normal attacks, charge attacks, or skill damage. Uh, she's got a bit of everything, and on top of that, she also has some really, really nice defensive capabilities with the defense up and the damage taken lowered. Now, Foundation of Prosperity effect at battle start, so she can normal attack on turn 1. But does this normal attack also mean that she's going to be good for burst? Because if it's just one turn, uh, one turn and quick grinding, sure. For longer fights though, you definitely want to have your CA enabled. I really want to see her in action. She looks very good for longer fights especially you had in fight with all the defensive stuff that she brings. The only thing, uh, the only place she might not be all that great at would be two to five turn comps where you do not want to do charge attacks. For everything else though, I can see her getting a 9.8 to 9.9. Oh god, the charge attack. A lap pillow and a kissy. Oh, she's an absolute must have. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on, we've got Yukata Nier. 
pretty nice CA for her as well. We did that summon. I uh, don't know how to feel about the umbrella. Doesn't look like it fits all that well. But still, it's everyone's resident messed up cat. So, what did they give you? Uh, water, special, axe and dagger as a Yukata evoker. Charge attack, massive water damage to a foe, restores water allies HP. When Nia has draws affinity, activates twice. Yet another CA focused character with some healing. That's curious coming from a character who dances with death. For second garden, 6 hits water damage to a foe, 1 turn cut to water allies debuff duration, nice. 1 life sap to caster, when at 13 life saps, consumes 6, instead of gaining 1, to increase the number of hits to 13. Oh, cool, a little bit more skill damage. And this is just a counter, these stacks don't really seem like they do much. With her life, hit 2 defense and water defense while giving 3 life saps to her. Lastly, never leave me, <laughs> she's still not over her abandonment issues. Caster attacks twice each turn. Okay, that's pretty amazing. White Rose Affinity with Caster and Water MC consumes 6 life saps, while in fact boost to attack, damage cap, skill specs, damage reduction and drain. Holy hell, that's a lot. Uh, attack twice is only for one turn and it's only for herself. It's on a 6 turn cooldown, so I get the feeling that if you want to use a charge attack setup and you don't actually need healing, a character like Tefnut might still be better in her spot. But let's check the passives first. When Nia drains a foe's HP, 1 life step to the caster, up to a maximum of 13. So the double strike from Never Leave Me should give her 2 stacks. When she has 6 at the end of the turn, activates for second garden, starting the battle with 6 life saps. Uh, 6 hits, water damage, and 1 turn cut to water debuffs basically every turn. Because she doesn't consume them, at least when she has 6. Uh, she needs to reach 13 in order to consume them, and even when she reaches 13, she consumes 6. So she only goes down back to 7. The only consumption comes from Never Leave Me, which she will be using on turn 1. But at the same time, she uses this on turn 1, she gains 3 back with with her life, going back to 3, 5 with the double strike, and 6 with for second garden. So starting on turn 1, she consumes 6, goes back up to 6, and she uses for second garden every single turn until Never Leave Me comes back up. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Boost to Water MC and Nier's defense based on how low their HP is, takes effect even when Nier is a sub ally. Oh, cool, passive garrison from the backline. Uh, this one might be a little bit hard to slot in, especially considering we only have two backline slots. Haselia is never getting away from there. Uh, we will be getting the Water Saint eventually with a boost to Magna skills. If you're playing Magna, that is likely not getting away from there. So this garrison just for MC, I don't know. I get the feeling she's going to be way better just playing in the front lines, but still, uh, hit to defense, lots and lots of skill damage, lots and lots of multi-hits, as well as some healing on charge attack. Uh, doesn't really make her suitable for burst, but for long-term content, she actually looks quite amazing. She gives drain too, just for herself and MC, mind you, but she gives drain too, on top of the healing on charge attack. We're going to have to see how high this Forsaken Garden damage is, but she looks like a pretty solid unit for most content, especially on full auto. Uh, she's got a damage cap for herself and for MC. MC already has a crap ton of damage. She's got a lot of multi hits. The one turn cut to water debuff duration also helps a little bit with clearing debuffs, or at least making them last less. And this is activated basically every single turn. Not bad, not bad at all. It looks like they really did save the best for last. Also, I don't know why, but seeing her in pink and white, that is really, really weird. If it wasn't for the absolute sad face, she would look like a completely different character. Okay, next one, Aglobeo, Fire, Saber, Yukata, and will to fire damage to a foe and cooldown for the damage skills. Oh, cool, and cooldown on charge attack rather than on the third skill like his Valentine version. First one, 3 hit fire damage to a foe, supplements fire ally skill damage, stackable, health fire crest, while I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, hit number increases to 6. Okay, skill damage supplemented might actually work nicely in fire. 
with some of the newer comps if they want to move away from the normal attack and assassin meta. Crests are also pretty nice. Second skill, 5 hit, 5 damage to a foe, debuff immunity to fire allies, additional effects when the aura is up, dispel cancel one time. More utility, fantastic. Third skill, oh god, oh god what is this? Uh, gives the aura to the caster, attack without using a turn and end cooldown for the other skills, while well, in fact supplements damage, boost to attack based on how high HP is and attack twice each turn. 20 turns cooldown, ready in 5. Ah, that ready in 5 kind of sucks, I guess both of these will go down somehow. No charge bargain upon normal attacks, activates this skill after normal attacks, the first one, okay now we're talking. Extra fire damage, faster stacks of the skill supplemented, and three crests. Second passive, one turn cut to the third skill standby and cooldown when Aglovale has Hellfire crests. Uh, has or is given, because this might actually make a hell of a lot of a difference. Because has Hellfire crests means it's going to be counted at the end of the turn, and that's basically one turn cut every single turn. If it's when he's given, Hellfire Crests, and this is a mistranslation, then this one might be sped up a little bit with the use of MC and other Crest units. Uh, when 5 are granted at the end of the turn, consumes all to deal 1000% fire damage to all foes, dispel and instantiate to Aglovale, which also resets the damage skills. So at the earliest you should be able to use this skill on turn 3 with the double attack and ending cooldown for the other skills, but then it's once every 10 turns. But yeah, mostly skill damage character, supplements fire life skill damage is also a really, really nice skill. Comes in with a pretty solid charge attack as well, and a little bit of utility with Veil and Dispel cancel. Really nothing much to complain about here. Uh, not really a burst unit, mostly a decent full auto unit. And I'm not really sure if it's going to pair up nicely with Percival and the usual assassin and normal attack focused teams that fire is currently running basically everywhere. Again, might be cool, especially for some comfy full auto. Okay, so what are the draw rates looking like? Uh, World Ender, we've got Grand Sandal Phone on rate up, and that's already a big reason for me not to wanting to pull on this banner. Of course, Aglovale rate up of 0.5, Alexiel on rate up, again 0.3, and she's going to get a 5 star soon, so that might actually be not all that bad. Next one is going to be Nia, again 0.5. There's Galleon, 0.5. Looks like that's it though. It's the new summer units plus uh, Sandalphone and Alexiel since we have the Earth Guild War coming soon. Uh, again, none of the characters actually required for the United fight. I do like the Galleon kit quite a bit and I don't think I would complain even if I've got a near, even though I still need to farm the entire Levy Magnetry grid from scratch. So let's see what the free rolls brings, and then I guess we'll burn a couple ourselves. I've got 235 rolls saved up right now, and yeah, sadly this summer campaign was a little bit weaker compared to the last one. If we did get the summer time limited tickets, I might actually have sparked here, but with 230 rolls saved up, I might actually just want to wait. Uh, save them for either Halloween or a double spark around New Year. Uh, Christmas plus New Year for the new Zodiac as well. Starting with a yellow. Lie to me? Ah, no lies. Ah well, got way too lucky on the song banner, I'm really not expecting much. I really shouldn't be expecting much. <laughs> that banner was insane. But still, uh, that's one SSR. Thank you, Ilsa. Literally never leaving me alone. Entire campaign, I've gotten two SSRs. One of them was yet another Yukata Ilsa. I literally cannot get away from this woman, I swear. We're up to 40. Oh, come on, don't do me like this. I know I've gotten insanely lucky, but one SSR in 40 rolls is way too little. Do me a solid here and drop a galleon, please. 
beefy and still no liars. Well, <laughs> we're up to 60 and it's so basically all yellow. Uh, do you maybe like single tickets more? Let's feed you some single tickets, see if they go a little bit better. And that was a pretty big loading time. Please tell me that was a really big loading time. That's one SSR. Oh, okay. Maybe, just maybe, my Earth Gildor is not going to be all that bad. Very unexpected, but still very damn happy. Blue on a 10 part. Blue on a 10 part. That one actually hurts. <laughs> that one actually hurts deep in the soul. Come on, please, Galen. Another one, but being in the last doesn't really mean much. <laughs> well, um, looks like I don't need to spark after all. Come here, you little cutie pie, you. <laughs> Uh, I love the way they've done these rate ups. The 0.5 rate up for the summer have been an absolute blessing. You can just YOLO a little bit and get the characters, it's amazing. Let's get to 100 and stop. But then again, if there's a near in here, I'm also not going to complain. That's it too. Folia isn't even on rate up. Getting double summer Folia is actually weird. But again, I've already won. I cannot complain about anything. I've already won. Well, uh, no Yukata near, but honestly, doesn't feel like that big of a loss. Again, lots of skill damage. But I do get the feeling that if you want to run a charge attack comp with a double striking buffer, um, Summer Tefnut might actually still feel her role. I don't know what to say, this has been quite the nice summer. Again, there's a couple of units I've been missing, but I can't really complain. <laughs> Uh, th that is one nice and cat part, Jesus. So I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, good luck with your summer draws, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!